How land is used determines more in our daily lives than we realize. It makes the difference between a short or a long commute to work. It can help create vibrant communities or dull ones. It affects the quality of air we breathe. A huge amount of wealth is held in land and the buildings on it, a staggering $249 trillion. Land also matters because people are attached to it and they care about how it's used. This is where planning comes in. Land use planners help manage this critical resource. They have the tricky job of trying to balance private interests against public ones. They need to respond to issues that are facing communities now, like the need for places to work, live, and relax, and also think about the future, like how to adapt to climate change. Planners tackle really important issues in their work and they open up public dialogue. But do planners have the right instruments and tools to affect change? Planning mostly uses spatial and land use plans and environmental and building code regulations. These instruments restrict how land can be used, but they don't influence how people actually want to use the land, and they can take a really long time to have an effect. A lot of other policies create incentives to use land too, and oftentimes they actually contradict what planners are trying to do. Many countries want to limit urban sprawl, but they provide financial incentives to construct single-family homes. A lot of places want to reduce car dependence, but they make commuting by car tax deductible. Too often, planning systems fail to achieve their objectives because of contradicting pressures. To provide the right incentives, a broader range of policies, particularly fiscal policies, need to be used. This takes better coordination between sectors and levels of government. It's high time for policymakers of all stripes to take land use seriously. Planners can't go it alone.